Hello, ladies. <clears throat> Back, part two. Um, I already started labeling because my other video is still waiting to upload. So, I mean, it's upload and I think it's processing now. I hope you can see this. Um, their labels are quite big, quite large. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving the uh, number of the drills, the drill, you know, DMC code numbers on here in case I need it. Uh, but I'm peeling up and uh, cutting just in half so that I can place the labels that will fit on my bottles. So that's what I'm doing now. <clears throat> I said I don't want this to go into three, four, and five uh, segments. I really don't want to drag you all, you know, through all of this labeling and kidding up and whatnot. And I'm sitting doing it. It's a pain in the butt. Uh... I hate kidding up and I hate kidding down, really. Let's see what I can talk about while I'm doing this so I don't get confused here. Uh, a couple nights ago when I opened up the uh, humility, I think that was the night, we and I said we were getting a storm. Oh, did we get a storm. It came down so hard, the rain hit so hard that it felt like... Um, it felt and sounded like hail. I mean, it just pelted. My mother, who is about maybe, I don't know, 30 minutes or so away from me. She's just across the PA line. And she said they mentioned tornadoes and stuff that they had either spotted them, they touched down something. So not very far from me. And, uh, oh, this is the ABs, you guys, uh, from 68 forward. Anyhow, uh, so apparently they got, you know, hit even harder. I wanted to mow my grass tomorrow, but they say we're supposed to get some more thunderstorms and rain, like mid-afternoon, and I'm still waiting for my grass to uh, <clears throat> dry up a little bit. It was not real warm today. I mean, it was warm, but it wasn't muggy. I think it's because of the rain that we had gotten the other day. And uh, it was cloudy out today and kind of gray uh, for a while. So I thought we were going to get some rain today. And, uh, but... No rain, so I guess uh, we lucked out. So I'm on 72 right now, if you can see it. I expect you can. I hope you can. Oh, this, I won't be able to start putting a diamond down on this until, you know, late tonight, but I'm going to do it because I've already got it marked in my book that I'm started starting on the 22nd. So, as long as I start before midnight, I'm good. Um, Linda, I wanted to tell you, uh, Liam's doing better. I mean, we got rid of the chair. <laughs> Had to. Chair went out the door. And uh, so far, he's been a little bit better. We also took away some of his toys because he had so many that I believe he was being overstimulated. So now he doesn't have a lot to choose from, but he has specific toys that he can chew on and, you know, be amazed by that. And I hear him in there whining now. It's he's either whining because he wants to go out or he's whining because he wants the kitty to play with him. 
and the kitty does not want to play with him. Oh, last three, y'all. Last three. Um, I plan on trying to uh, paint my wall on maybe Tuesday. That's not uh, anything real bad. I can get to it, have my daughter empty the shelves. So, I and it's not that big of a wall. I can do it in probably about 10 minutes. It's not that bad. What's bad is the doggone moving stuff. So, okay. I'm going to keep this around in my case. Because in case I need... I, I recognize the colors by the numbers. After 40 years of cross-stitch, I ought to recognize some of these. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, so this is the uh, beginning of my 140 bottle case. I'm going to slip this in here in the thing. And I wanted to show you, Linda. Okay, if you remember, you bought, uh, you when you sent me, oops, excuse me, when you sent me the uh, release papers. There you go. I hope you can see it. I stuck it to the top of my case. It's a true friend is always there for you. I stand by that in myself and in those that I uh, am friends with. So it's on my case and I'll see it every time I use this case. So I thank you so much, dear friend. Okay. Now, how long have I been on here with that little babble? Okay, seven minutes. <clears throat> I switched to a pink bag. I didn't have a purple one. I had the blue one. I didn't have a purple one. So I'm going to use a pink one. There's pink and purples. So that works. As I stated before, Craftably is fantastic because they start out with number one and work their way to number 80. Their bags are out numerically. So hopefully there's no static. That I don't know. I haven't... I've only done, I think, one craftably. I'm not even, I can't remember. I probably have. Uh, sometimes, you know, I can, sometimes I can walk and chew gum at the same time, and sometimes I can't. So I'm sitting here trying to do these label, or these uh, drills, and you all expect me to talk. Or at least I hope you do, because <laughs> otherwise I'm just quiet. I'm using a MOSFA tray in case I dribble drills. So there is number one. Oh, and there goes the drill. See? It didn't even hit the tray. Well, good heavens. Number one. Uh, let's see. What else can I talk about? Uh, my daughter and I ran down to the store here a little while ago. Picked up a couple things. Oh, and I am drinking a cold brew. Not beer. Cold brew coffee. I don't drink. <laughs> mm. Um... I picked them up at Aldi's. I really like them. And I guess Dollar General carries them too. And Dollar General is a little bit cheaper than Aldi's, which is surprising. <coughs> and uh, I think it's called uh, Cold Brew. It's by Stoke or something. They have a, um, a Cold Brew by... Um, uh, Oh, why can't I think of their name? You know, the big coffee guy, Starbucks. They have them by Starbucks, but it's like five or six dollars, about six dollars for a bottle of it. And I said, no, that's all right. It, I buy the cheaper. And uh, that's what works 
for me. I hope you can see this. Because, oops, there goes my table. Shaking everybody. Uh, I suspect y'all want to get to the uh, the uh, ABs and things, but we'll start this way. I'll go 20-30 minutes. <clears throat> I'll run a third video and we'll see if y'all want to watch it. You know, if you don't, I do. I watch my videos. I watch them before I load them, and I watch them after I load them, because I want to make sure, you know, they're good. Well, at least better than I usually do. Uh, this is an Art Dot <clears throat> case, by the way. <coughs> it was one my daughter bought me. I'm constantly saying that, you know, my daughter bought me this, my daughter bought me that. Yeah, she does. That's her heart. You know, it's what she does. Uh, I don't know if I raised her that way or if she just turned out that way. And I appreciate her. I mean, we live together and you get in arguments, you know, two women in a household. Sometimes that, you know, gets a little crazy. But she puts up with me, I put up with her, and it all seems to come out in the wash, so to speak. And um, let's see, what else? I am running out of uh, jibber jab here. I'm just anxious to get these all together, all done. So that I can uh, start this painting. Uh, uh, what was her first name? Her last name is Voth. The uh, designer, I guess, of that painting. Uh, I, I, like I said before, I am so hoping. Oh, these bottles are in here tight. I am so hoping that. You know, she does some more designs. Okay, so there's three three tens. I don't need all of those, of course. I'm hoping, I'm hoping one bag will fit. The other two, of course, will go into my little pink baggie. The other two. It'll be labeled. I don't know if. But these are going to fit because they're pretty well stuffed. We will see what doesn't fit. I just tape the bag closed. And it will not. Okay. So, I just fold it down. Take a piece of tape. And in the storage it goes. So, going to be a lot. And these drills are beautiful. They are beautiful. I mean, they are shiny. I don't see so far any bits and pieces. And number seven, there's two number sevens. There's two 317s. So, one in the bag. And maybe this will be close enough to fit, I hope. But probably not. It, these, bo these bottles are small. Oh, I may get it in here. Oh, my goodness. Oh. There you go. There wasn't any static. I bounced it. One, two, three of them tried to escape. And there is one little, one teeny tiny little, if you can see it. Very little. 
Okay, how long have I been on here now? Let me see. Oh, 15 minutes. Geez, 15 minutes and only seven down and millions to go. <laughs> oh, they are in. I'll tell you, this art dot, I bought some of these from Timu. And the styrofoam on it is nowhere near as thick as this and as sturdy. And they kind of come in and out and out. They don't fall out, but they're easy to come in and out. These ones, whoa, you have to fight with them to pull them out. So we got number eight, which is a 918, which is a gray. Oh, I hope everybody is uh, cool, you know, where they're at or warm, depending on your weather. You know, hello, Hoya Boy, Hoya, yeah, Hoya Bella. Oh, Lord. You know what? Maybe I need some more coffee. My tongue is not cooperating. It's wrapped around my eye teeth and I can't see what I'm saying. Good heavens. Oh, this is just pathetic. I just want to start this as quickly as possible. And I have a feeling that when I start this thing tonight, I'm not going to want to stop. And that's the scary thing. Uh, oh, please. One drill. Uh, I, I think I'm going to try and uh, contact Craftably because I want to find out more about this artist. I want to find out, you know, this is number nine. It's uh, nine, oh, 319, I'm sorry. 319, that's pretty green. Really pretty green. Uh, I'd like to know. I, I mean, or at least I was. I would be hoping that they would maybe kind of personally contact me if she does anything else or if they know if she's going to do anything else that is on the same lines as this moonlight in the garden because I, I am definitely interested in her work. You know, if she does a landscape like this, or if it's houses she likes doing, or if it's animals, or the combination of both. Because it's it's such a gorgeous painting. And I, I mean, I want to understand more on how it works. You know, she drew the, the thing up, uh, drew the, the painting up, or drew the picture up. And how does it work in-house? I mean, what you know, how do they do it? You know, do they do it by hand? Is it done by computers? You know, that's the backside of diamond painting that I would like to try to understand. 321. You know, just for my own curiosity, you see these videos where they show uh, in China where they, you know, run the machines and they do this and do that. And to me, that's so impersonal. You know, I would like to know just like when I did uh, cross stitch, I knew some of the designers and they drew it up themselves. They designed it in a uh, computer setting, uh, you know, pick the colors and they picked the colors. They didn't let the computer do it. You know, they knew the color they wanted and they picked it themselves. But they drew it. The idea was theirs. They drew the pattern or they drew the picture and then they placed it, uh, you know, on the computer or on their, in their, or not in the computer, on their uh, program and then made sure the colors matched their eye, you know, their idea. This is uh, 327. You know, and uh, so. I'd, I'd like to know how the process is, is done, how, how, it, how it's made. I think it would be really interesting to uh, see it done or have it explained to you. I'd, I'd just like to know the, 
you know, the backstories of some things. Maybe I'm being nosy, but I would like to know if somebody do, you know, if craftably, maybe would do a video on something, you know, on their process. Maybe they have and I just missed it. You know, so I'd, I'd like to see it. I'd like to see what goes on and, you know, how it's done. So, what's my time, people? Okay, it's 20 minutes. All right, I got at least another 10. I might be able to get through these, and then we're going to have to take, you know, I'm going to have to stop and go again, if you don't mind. This is a big bag. This is not going to all fit. And so far, ladies, uh, well, there's a little bit of static there, but mm, not bad. I've got the uh, I've got some uh, yeah oh what do you call them I don't use them for anything other than this and if I have you know fabric softener sheets there we go I only use liquid fabric softener so when I have these I have to sit down and think okay what's that called you know it's a piece of paper that smells good <laughs> You know, so if you know, you know. So, well, that's number 12. We're going to be here a while. I think what I'm going to do is I'll break this here in a short. I'm going to load up a bunch more. And then when I get to the uh, ABs, I will do a video then because this is just way too many colors. It can be way too boring, and I'm going to start babbling like a lunatic. This is 340. Oh, I love this purple. I liked it in cross-stitch. I love it in this, too. 540, also. I I love these shades. So, look at that. No static. Zip right in. Hallelujah. And I love that they're in order. I love that they're in order. Thank you, Craftably. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. Makes kidding up a bit more pleasurable, to be exact. So, okay, 22 minutes. Well, not bad. Hopefully my other video finally got up there. Is this 341? It's a pretty blue. So, I hear the puppy in there playing with his squeaky toy. I don't know if my daughter's playing with him or what. There we go. This one has a little bit of static. Okay, this one does. Okay, craftably. That's all right. Here we go. I'm going to put a fabric softener sheet in this one. And that'll help. It's just a very minimal amount. Usually I notice that if the the bags have a tiny pinhole in them, there is no static. And I think that's the best thing that all the companies should do is their machines, as they load or something, ought to make a little pinprick in each bag because that releases, you know, that staticky air, you know, from that sudden rush, and it puts air in the bags, and then that causes the things. Sorry about that. Whoa, I'm trying to knock you guys out, uh, and it stops the uh, static uh, because that's a pain, you know. But that's number seven, so. I think I'm going to get off here. Uh, yeah, it's at 24 minutes. Good heavens. Let's see. 15. Oh. Um, I just don't want to bore anybody. That's my issue. Uh, I do want everybody to know, too. I love budget-friendly paintings. This is... Uh, 355 dark brick uh, you know and I love 
the the uh, little more expensive paintings. I really do too. I will paint anything. I have. I don't just have the drive to own or have diamond paintings. I, I don't know if it's my personality or what, but if I find a hobby that I really, truly love, I get such a passion for it that it's... It, I guess it does kind of border on obsession because, you know, I will see a painting that speaks to me, my soul, my heart, and the joy I get from painting it is like none other. It's, it's just like this one, the moonlight in the garden. I, I can't explain it. I can't express it the way I want to. I can't tell you the true feeling of it. But if you had it in front of you, believe me, if you perch, if you could get it and you wanted it bad enough that it spoke to you, once you got it in front of you, the look of it, the the things you'll see in it that you didn't see online. The, you know, I don't know if the artists felt that way when they painted some of these, you know, or drew them up, whatever they did. Um, because you, if they did, you could almost feel their passion in what they created. And then when you get it in your home and you paint it, I think you should have the same passion. The same passion that that artist put down on his canvas is the same passion you should have when you diamond paint. Because you are creating it. They didn't put diamonds on it. All they did, and I'm not saying all they did because it's very important, that they painted it. But then you're enhancing their beauty, enhancing the quality of what they put down on paper and then on canvas. And it should, it should give you that passion. It should give you that feeling of joy that you created it by taking the time to paint it. Okay. I'm modeling here. I'm getting off my track. I think it's time for me to go. It's 28 minutes. Uh, number 18. I better shut my mouth because I'm just... I guess it's how I feel about things. It's the same way I felt about cross-stitch. I cannot cross-stitch a chart if it's printed on the canvas. I have to have it a blank piece of cloth and then I will cross stitch that that chart that pattern onto it I want to see it develop I want to see it come to life and that's what these paintings do for me they come to life and I have meaning in them because that cat reminds me the Randall Spangler with the cat bookshelf that is part of me. So, you know, every time you diamond paint, I think you should put a little bit of yourself in that painting. You know, maybe others don't feel that way. They just see it as a hobby. They buy them, they store them, they, whatever they do. But I'm sorry, I can't do that. It's my passion. So, okay, I'm going to get off here. And I will fill up more bottles. And when I get to the uh, ABs and the LZs, I will come back on and do another video. This is going to take hours for this thing to upload to YouTube. So if you don't see it tonight, you'll see it tomorrow along with the other third one. So y'all have a good night. Forgot to tell you, when I started this, it was about 830
uh, approximately. It's 9.06 p.m., still the 22nd, still Saturday, and yep, it's still 2023, which is coming quickly to the end. Uh, 2024 will be here before we know it. So, okay, y'all have a good one. I will talk to you later. Diamond Painting Crazy Lady, I am really out of here.